welcome everyone um, and happy Earth Day. I think this is the 51st Earth Day. I think last year was 50th anniversary. So happy 51st anniversary uh, of Earth Day. Uh, my name is Andrew Musgrave and I'm the director of the Catholic Social Action Office for the Archdiocese of Cincinnati. And we are uh, thrilled uh, to welcome you here to our prayer service to celebrate uh, Earth Day. Um, this prayer service is being brought to you by our Care for Creation Task Force. We have several members of our task force here. We appreciate having them here to participate and, and pray with us. And um, uh, we also thank the Catholic uh, Climate Covenant who uh, provided us with the content that we'll be using for uh, the prayer service. So um, we will, um, today we've got uh, Sister Christine Pratt and Shirley Sweater from IHM, who are going to be uh, helping us to lead in prayer. So I thank them for being here. And uh, we will go ahead and start with our opening prayer. Sorry. It's all right. God of all creation, your goodness and glory shine forth through everything you have made. Through the light of faith, help us to see this world, our common home, not as a resource to dominate and exploit, but as a gift to be cherished by all generations. Open our eyes, Lord. God of all, you made the earth and saw that it was good, but we have yet to properly care for it and give you thanks for the gifts you have given us through it. Open our now, eyes, Lord. Now the earth cries out and your people hunger and thirst. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes to see the beauty of your creation, the pain we have inflicted upon it, and move us with compassion to help heal and restore your world. Open our eyes, Lord. Lead us to act as neighbors who do not pass by on the other side, but rather walk side by side as sisters and brothers in Christ. Open our eyes, Lord. So that together we may care for all that you have made and with all creation sing your praise. Open our eyes, Lord. And prompted by your spirit, we ask this in the name of Jesus, through whom all creation was made. Our first reading is from Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how awesome is your name through all the earth. I will sing of your majesty above the heavens with the mouths of babes and infants. You have established a bulwark against your foes to silence enemy and avenger. When I see your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars that you set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and a son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him little less than a God, crowned him with glory and honor and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, put all things at his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the seas, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. Lord our God, how awesome is your name through all the earth. Ecological conversion is to return to God. It is to return to dust and ashes as creatures in fraternal communion with the wonders and terrifying powers of creation. For some people, ecological conversion may be as simple as accepting the reality of climate change and beginning to shift behaviors accordingly. It could mean an awakening to the reality that nature bears the touch of God and is therefore deserving of reverence. It might lead to giving up meat or eating far less of it, or at least being more conscious of how it is produced. Of course, it could mean a lot more. 
under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, ecological conversion is what has the potential to create a holistic political economy in which we no longer idolize profits or consumer ease. Imagine a new and yet ancient arrangement of economics, neither capitalist nor socialist, in which citizens become caretakers in ways that are profoundly attuned to the integrity of creation and the well being of all people. This conversion calls for a number of attitudes which together foster a spirit of generous care, full of tenderness. First, it entails gratitude and gratuitousness, a recognition that the world is God's loving gift and that we are called quietly to imitate his generosity in self-sacrifice and good works. Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing and your father who sees in secret will reward you. It also entails a loving awareness that we are not disconnected from the rest of creatures, but joined in a splendid universal communion. As believers, we do not look at the world from without, but from within, conscious of the bonds with which the Father has linked us to all beings. By developing our individual God-given capacities, an ecological conversion can inspire us to greater creativity and enthusiasm in resolving the world's problems, and in offering ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. We do not understand our superiority as a reason for personal glory or irresponsible dominion, but rather as a different capacity which in its turn entails a serious responsibility stemming from our faith. Sorry, grateful for the gift of creation and contrite in the face of the deteriorating condition of the natural world, we invite Catholics and men and women of goodwill in every walk of life to consider with us the moral issues raised by the environmental crisis. We ask the Catholic community, how are we called to care for God's creation? How may we apply our social teaching with its emphasis on the life and dignity of the human person to the challenge of protecting the earth, our common home. What can we do in the Catholic community? What can we in the Catholic community offer to the environmental movement? And what can we learn from it? How can we encourage a serious dialogue in the Catholic community in our parishes, schools, colleges, universities, and other settings on the significant ethical dimensions of the environmental crisis. And now we're gonna share a uh, brief video that highlights some of the great things that Catholic institutions are doing uh, with regards to caring for God's creation.
I'm Pat Bergen from the Congregation of St. Joseph. Probably the biggest contribution we have made is through our five mother houses. One we lost to Katrina and it's now being transformed into a water garden that will keep 3,780 acres in all directions from flooding in New Orleans. Up to 9,000 acres will have diminished flooding. Our other four of mother houses were extremely oversized for for us and so we began looking at the signs of the times, realized that soon people in need of assisted care would not be able to find housing. So we deconstructed our buildings using everything that was in those buildings to send to people who build for the poor. Then we constructed living centers for assisted care um, using lead gold guidelines and powering them with solar energy. These spaces as space became available then would be offered to those with limited income. In addition, we have spirituality centers connected to each that were mandated to per offer processes, programs to teach other people how to build sustainably and live sustainably. Since we wanted to live and work sustainably, we committed ourselves to certain things to help the living represent the investment we had made in those buildings. Good afternoon, my name is Marilyn Cott. I'm a parishioner at the Holy Name of Jesus in uh, Redlands, California, and I'm a member of the Creation Care Ministry here. Um, Mark C Candelari and I are here today taking pictures of our landscaping. Um, we've, been, we've been mapping the parish campuses um, to learn about what lives here, both the flora and the fauna, and we share that with the other parishioners via the bulletin and uh, other communication methods. And what we think that does is that we hope that that increases appreciation for everything that God has given us on this uh, beautiful earth and um, that that can inspire uh, more careful caretaking. And meanwhile, um, four days until Lent, I uh, wish you a joyful um, and meaningful Lent. I'm Trish. Hello, I'm Sandra. Hello, I'm Cindy. Uh, and I'm Mark. We're here uh, down at the Redlands Conservancy here in beautiful sunny SoCal, fulfilling our Lenten penance the best way we know how. Uh, manual labor. <laughs> We're here in partnership with the Redlands Conservancy to general mulch work, ground work, restoring uh, restoring native native uh, fauna, fauna and flora, and just the best way we know how, and the best way we know how to take care of our common home. I'm Sabrina. I'm representing the Care for Creation Ministry at St. Thomas More Catholic Community in St. Paul, Minnesota. We restore creation by doing small things with great love. Laudato Si has figured prominently in our work and we use all available communication channels to spread its message. Our group consistently acts to engage each other and our larger community on the why and the how to care for our common home. In our monthly meetings, we plan and follow up actions such as organizing Lodato C study sessions and screenings of ecological films, conducting an energy audit and installing parish-wide energy saving LED lighting publishing eco-friendly tips in our bulletin, and engaging in community actions to promote ecologically sound policies and practices. We're committed to the ongoing work of translating ecological spirituality into action. <music> Prayerful
We come now to our uh, one kind of interactive part, <clears throat> and uh, we have a, a question that we'd like to pose to everyone who's here today um, as a way of kind of um, uh, both encouraging the work that is being done, but also to share ideas about um, ways that we can all work together and learn from each other uh, in our work. And that, and that question is this, <clears throat> uh, what are we, uh, in our individual parishes or our uh, communities um, doing to respond uh, to this call for ecological conversion. So what have you done in your parish? What have you done um, in your home, in your neighborhood? How have you uh, responded to this idea of ecological conversion um, in, um, in as you tried to live out the, the ideals of uh, caring for all of God's creation. So I just invite anyone to chime in to mention some things. Obviously, some of you are members of communities that are Laudato Si communities. Um, and so those are some great things you could offer. But again, just open it up. Anyone who wants to share anything that you and your church, your school, your neighborhood has done uh, to move towards ecological conversion. So at Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish, um, we um, did a food justice presentation um, in, Mar at the, in, the end of, in, in March. And then in the bulletin, the Sunday's bulletin, the 18th, we uh, had a things takeaways from that presentation and recommended um, what individuals could do. And that is eat further down the food chain, food ladder, fruits and vegetables, um, less meat, be a meatless day. Um, several things that could be done, and then to donate any of the proceeds to the uh, local food pantry for the hunger to be more in solidarity. So um, that was uh, that was there, and in named Earth Day, it was in commemoration of Earth Day. We had about a full page of what food justice is and what uh, what actions people could take. That's great. Thanks for sharing that, Ted. And glad to hear that all those great things are happening out there. I'm a member of Bellarmine Parish in Cincinnati on Xavier's campus. And one of the things we've done is we developed, I think it's been about five or six years, we developed a Healthy Earth team. And they base, and I'm on that committee, we are basically responsible for letting parishioners know about things that are going on with climate. Um, we also have a, a Fresh is Better group that is helping the Evanston neighbors grow their own gardens. Um, so yes, that's one of the things that we've been doing. And I think we are a Laudato Si community, uh, but we developed just a healthy earth team that basically lets parishioners know what's going on in climate change and that. That's great. Thanks, Rita. And I know Tim uh, over at Bellarmine and obviously is a great leader over there and helping out with that. So um, we thank you for all that leadership you all are providing and the great work you're doing. Thank you. Well, I'm the uh, Peace and Justice um, uh, Commission leader at uh, Sacred Heart Parish in Fairfield. Um, is my audio working? <laughs> okay. And, um, and we have less interest really at the parish for anything um, about Laudato Sea or uh, the earth or anything like that. So, so basically I've just included in the bulletin, especially during Lent, it was, um, I thought, um, Ted's comments were interesting because it sounds like we kind of thought in the same terms where uh, the almsgiving ended up with uh, some um, items put into our, um, our little cart that we uh, give to pantries. And um, we talked about maybe giving up uh, meat for, um, we used some of the information from Global 
uh, climate movement to to uh, put into the bulletin. Um, but I really love the idea of having a healthy Earth team, and I've written that down. And um, a team, I think, would be better than just coming from one person and one place, which is the bulletin. So um, I I also spend a lot of time uh, personally on if if. If I'm on Facebook, I'll always share the um, Marianist Environmental Education Center's uh, comments because I don't think that I think that's an unused resource in our um, in our you know vicinity that we really should promote uh, that place, which is um, a Saint Catherine habitat, also. So, thanks, Thank Rita. You. Yeah. Um... Some folks from Meek have been involved in our care for creation task force, and we try to share their resources as well because they do uh, do a lot of great things. And and I certainly applaud your efforts, even if you've got a maybe a community that is not as engaged or interested in doing it. Um, you can keep doing it, and and doing that being that won't uh, that one voice in the wilderness crying out and and asking for it. So um, kudos to you for doing that. That actually, you know. One thing that I do want to mention on behalf of the Care for Creation Task Force, um, and I referenced this earlier, we have a program that's now uh, in its fourth year called our Laudato Si Communities, where parishes and schools can uh, endeavor as a community to become a Laudato Si community. And there's several steps, there's some surveys, there's some educational components, some work that can be done with your school, parish, um, whatever it might be. And we've had um, Gosh, I think we're sitting at 20 something communities now that have joined over the last three years and uh, uh, a number of them uh, are represented here. Um, but obviously anyone who's interested in, in being a part of that, uh, please reach out to me and let me know because uh, it's, a, it's a great way to engage more people and, and maybe something, Rita, you could think about to build in a team around who knows uh, what, what the Holy Spirit might move people to do, but, uh, but a great way to, again, engage people in this work and get them thinking about uh, not only what's been done so far, but what can be done now and, and thinking about the future about what can be done. So uh, a great kind of lead into that. And again, appreciate all your work, Rita. I'm Colleen Kammer and I'm a member of the Precious Planet Ministry at St. Francis of Assisi in Bellbrook. And um, that group has been in existence um, for over a decade, about, I guess 10 to 12 years. I've joined about six years ago and just a small little group of people has really accomplished a lot. Our biggest project, our most recent project is uh, putting in a four acre prairie because the parish uh, being suburban has a lot of land and that was all being mowed. So we've you know, prepped it and planted it this winter. It's starting to grow. And so that'll be four acres that uh, is taken out of mowing and then that'll increase our biodiversity and, and so forth and bring a lot of life uh, to the parish grounds. So we're proud of that. And um, we keep, uh, we're kind of restructuring as a committee because some of the original members are no longer wanting to be as involved. So we have a new um, a leader, uh, Matt Novo, who just, uh, took the helm and so we'll see how we go forward from, from here. But I know good things are on the horizon with Matt. And uh, just personally, I, any, ch any chance I get to talk about native plants and um, using them in landscaping, I do that. And um, recently won approval with our, my parents' uh, condo association in Miamisburg to put native plants in one of their entrance beds as you drive into the complex. So I'm, uh, finishing the design on that. And then those plants will come from the Marianist Environmental Education Center. That's fantastic. Thanks, Helene. That's yeah. a lot of good stuff. <clears throat> Reminds me, one of our Care for Creation Task Force members has a, had a big uh, spot behind her house that was all mowed grass and they turned it into a um, native plant and just this beautiful uh, natural environment with um, lots of plants and bugs and, and grasses. And, um, and interestingly, you talk about native plants. I, um, I never knew this, but I learned that um, honeysuckle is actually an invasive species. I love the way it smells, but she was talking about all the work they had to do to get all that out of there so the, to allow those native plants to grow. Um, but they just, it took, it took um, a bit of work, but they turned it into just a really beautiful space behind their house. So um, kudos again to you also on that, on that work, so. Thank you. And one thing I should add, I'm sure most of the people on this group know this, but the calorie pear is 
is a real invasive species. And so we've got about 30 of those on the property and we're um, just consulted with a, a bunch of different people, the Metro Parks being one of them to understand what the best treatment method would be. So that's also a project that's underway is to eradicate the, um, the uh, calorie pear and also the honeysuckle that keeps coming back. And then we have something called you don't think it could be this bad. It's called Tree of Heaven, <laughs> but it's Alanthus, and that is a real invasive one too. So working on all those species too. Fantastic. Well, thank you all for sharing um, all the great things that are happening in your parishes and your communities and the work that you're doing um, with your churches and your individual work. And uh, definitely pray for you and, and encourage you to continue this and, and learn from each other. Uh, and that moves us into our, our next section, um, Shirley is going to talk about some ideas that um, that Catholic uh, Climate Covenant have suggested for um, possible ways you can uh, do some other work, but also a few others that we've considered on our on our own. In the video, we saw and heard some examples of Catholic restoration activities. In the readings, we learned about the call for eco conversion. Now we are invited to share what we individually or collectively with our family, parish, school, or religious community have done or pledged to do to restore our common home. Take a minute to look at the act, list of actions below. Is there something we've already done that we can submit? Is there an action we can take as a community in the near future? Are there actions you have or will take individually or with your family? We're not limited by the actions below. But when I, I, you might have seen me jotting down. So tree planting, it sounds like um, anyone like the St. Francis of Assisi uh, group that Colleen talked about, who is planting trees or gardens, um, <clears throat> whether or not they're a St. Kateri habitat, are doing the first and third activity. Um, in, in fact, if you get it, in touch with Arbor Day, they'll send you baby trees for really little money. They are baby trees, but they do grow into trees um, for a very, very little cost. And they send you only ones that are native to, that will thrive without any help in, in your area. Um, Bellarmine mentioned the community garden. So that's the third one. And, um, uh, the Mariness, of course, the meek at Dayton um, provides, usually they have a native plant sale in the spring, but I don't know what's happening with that because of COVID. Does anyone else know? Yes, I, their sale is uh, June uh, 26th or 29th there, that last part of June. Great. Okay. So, and they probably have a website or at least a link on something, right? Um, Marianist Environmental Education Center, that's the official name. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so the tree planting and the planting of a garden, um, especially anything edible from a garden so that we're not buying things at big, huge stores that get shipped up from Florida or Georgia or other states. We need to, when we're purchasing either food to eat or plants to grow, that we're um, being conscious of how they got to us as plants. They, somewhere they started as seeds, right? But then when they added soil and grew them up, and if they ship them to our big box stores and we have to use our gasoline or, or hybrid cars to go get the, the plants and things, um, there's just a whole lot of extra energy and resources used when we purchase plants, trees, or food from faraway places. Um, and while I'm on that topic, we'll, we'll get back to cleanup and maybe we can think of an area in the um, Archdiocese area here to focus on cleaning up. But um, while I'm talking about not choosing not to go far away for our 
plants and food. Um, I kind of thought the fourth one could be focused on fasting. Ted and Rita talked about fasting from meat, not just on Fridays, but you know, at least once one day a week. That's a good place for people to start. And if we do it on Fridays, then most Catholics can relate to um, being conscious of what you're eating on Fridays. So um, it took, I've been doing it for five years or so, fasting every Friday, fasting from meat on Fridays. And I finally got my husband to, um, to join me in that. <laughs> and there's so many wonderful meatless meals you can make, meatless and chickenless. So think of it this way. Don't eat any four leggeds on Fridays. Don't eat, don't eat any two leggeds on Fridays, like chicken and turkey and things. Maybe fish, but why not just beans or a, you know, a complimentary meal? And I'm a dietitian, so I know you don't have to eat the beans and rice or the beans and grain in the same meal to get the complimentary proteins. It doesn't have to be on the same plate as long as, and here in America, we really don't have any protein malnutrition uh, in the general population. So um, don't worry too much about uh, reducing or eliminating meat or poultry from your, or even fish from your uh, meals on Fridays. So fasting from meat on Fridays, like Ted and Rita had suggested. How about fasting from using plastic or styrofoam on Fridays. That's an idea we just kind of bubbled up um, talking about earlier today. Um, plastic and styrofoam are made from petroleum. And yes, some companies are making plant-based plastic-like uh, materials and we should try to encourage that supply and demand but how about at least one day a week you fast from relying on any type of plastic? Um, it's so pervasive. And I don't know how the specific uh, numbers, but at some point we're gonna have more plastic in our oceans than fish. That's a really, really sad statement. Um, and anybody else can think of something to fast from on Fridays, uh, including like uh, Sister Christine had mentioned earlier to me, um, fasting from getting things from far away, eat local, especially on Fridays. So then on to cleanup. I enjoy the river, um, both the Little Miami River and the Ohio River. And really, I know it's a lot better than it was 30 years ago. Before the Clean Water Act, I think there was a much worse litter problem in the rivers. But it's still not great. You still will see litter and litter along highways and, or, or streets. And why is it always like cigarettes? containers and beer cans. I mean, just seems to be. Um, and of course, if it's anything plastic, it's not gonna degrade down. So um, there is a river cleanup once a year. Uh, the Ohio River Way is a, one organization that does it, but where else do you think we need to maybe gather together safely, socially distanced and with masks? Um, to clean, to clean up. I really appreciate, and I haven't done this much here. I did it back when I lived in Wisconsin, but of going into like parks to our green spaces and just going through if you, um, if you are going with your kids or going with your partner or going by yourself to go for a walk, uh, bring a plastic bag and a plastic, no, maybe not plastic, bring a paper bag uh, or a, a reusable bag and um, if you find some garbage, throw it in there and then dump it out in you know, those containers because those green spaces are so precious uh, to just go through and collect that garbage. Um, and so I guess maybe better bring a gardening glove and a reusable grocery bag and you can pick it up and, and dump it out um, because those spaces um, are 
obviously havens and habitats for, for flowers and for animals to just go through and walk. And it's a simple thing to do. And it's a good way to teach for those of us with little kids, a good way to teach them as well about caring for God's creation. Great, thanks. Anybody else? Well, and does anyone else who maybe didn't get a chance to share um, in the previous segment, is there something that we just talked about or read about that reminded you of something you either have done, your parish, your community, your family, or might plan to do in the next month or two? Thank you, Shirley, for sharing all those ideas. And obviously, uh, for all of you that are uh, here with us to think about this and those who might be watching this at a later point uh, to consider, uh, again, ways that you can um, individually or communally uh, work to um, in, in small ways, because obviously small things add up together to make big impacts. So um, lots of great ideas and things to do. So <clears throat> thank you again for that, Shirley. And this brings us uh, to our uh, closing prayer. So um, I thank uh, again, Sister Christine and Shirley for participating and for all of you that are here with us uh, for joining us in this prayer. And uh, we certainly encourage everyone uh, everywhere to do, their, um, uh, to do their part in helping out with uh, taking care of God's creation. And, uh, and if you're feeling called to do so, reach out to our office. We have a Care for Creation Task Force that's got representatives from across the archdiocese that are always working and trying to find ways that we can um, better as an archdiocese be involved in this work. And we'd love to have other folks join us in this. So uh, on that note, we'll, uh, we'll close in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> creator God who made our beautiful world, appointed us as its guardians and gifted us with everything we need. Forgive us for the times we cause it harm for the times our way of life affects our neighbors. Inspire us to care for the environment, to help rebuild lives and communities, to share in the griefs and anxieties, joys and hopes of all your people so that all your creation may flourish. In your name we pray, amen. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you all again for your presence. Thank you for your um, participation and thank you for all the work you're doing and uh, wish you all a wonderful uh, rest of this Earth Day. <clears throat>